The forgery pulls every single dungeon from Windcraft and puts it all in the one spot. You accept the levels to max and pushes you to your limits as you try your best to rush through each dungeon. Here, dungeons are remade into an absolute corrupted hellscape that will push you to your limits for the highest rewards. Or maybe that's what they'd like you to think. Let me explain. Back when I first started playing Windcraft, I remember there was so much buzz around the forgery. All of my goober friends were even talking about it. Naturally, when I first started playing Windcraft, I had a friend recommend that I try the forgery. And try, I did. I was sweating, like a priest in a preschool, positioned like a capital D in my chair so I could set up my build for dungeon running. After initial struggle and pain, I completed my first dungeon and then the next. And eventually, through arduous grinding, I made it all the way to the end. I remember, so clearly, my jaw dropped. And I quickly realized, this dude is fucked up! Why did he tell me to do this? You cannot run forgery and expect to make a profit. Now tell me, why the fuck am I 85 runs dry without a mythic? Stephen Hawking once said, I am unable to move, I am unable to speak, but at least I am not 85 fucking runs dry without a mythic or a high pixel skyblock player, or a null raider, but in 4FM boy. But in Forgery, I genuinely think there's a lot more to this than just getting the mythic at the end. Now, I'd like to discuss why players still love the Forgery, why this content is important, what makes it worse than alternatives, what the future of Forgery looks like, and if it's even worth your time. In the forgery, you need to complete all eight dungeons accessed with corrupted keys all without dying to unlock the forgery chest. This chest can give you anything from dungeon exclusive gear to runes, XP potions, and even a mythic if you're lucky enough. Extra stress on the lucky part. I'll dive into that in a second. Each of the dungeons you see in the forgery actually already exist in the map, but what the forgery does is literally takes all of those dungeons and repurposes them by jacking up the level and giving them a refreshed look, but I prefer the term hate crime. I can't be the the only one who thinks it looks like someone took decrepit sewers and punched the fuck out of it for no reason. I found myself spending a ton of my time here when I was starting out in Windcraft. One thing the forgery is pretty nice for outside of just gunning for the forgery chest is actually grinding levels. From level 65 and up, you and a group of friends can tackle lower level dungeons and climb your way up the dungeons to higher levels as long as you have the keys for it. I would still recommend Pfinder grind parties though, this is only really optimal if you have a strong group of friends and XP gear. In theory, the forgery is awesome though. Being able to repurpose early but cool content and flipping it into endgame content is honestly really beneficial for expanding the endgame. And honestly, it's fun as hell. Trying out different builds out of seemingly thousands that Windcraft has to offer to try to make your way through an onslaught of rooms and intricate boss fights is just cool. I personally love the idea of sitting down after a long day and just matching through forgery runs with a couple of friends. For me personally, there's so much potential in content content like forgery, but unfortunately, it also has its issues. The mythics from forgery are like women. I'm dying alone. The chances of you actually getting one of these things from your forgery chest is a mere 1.5%. I know exactly what you're thinking. That's like Laurie fan levels of low. No one's getting that shit. Here's some numbers. It takes around 51 runs on average to get a mythic with pity chance. Which, say you're doing a full run every 25 minutes, which I should say is very generous by the way. That's a whopping 21 fucking hours just to get your mythic. Don't make me say it. Okay, I'm saying it. That is bad. That is very bad. That's like an I'd rather shit on my hands and clap than put myself through that type of bad. For scale, your rates on loot running are probably up to three to four times better than that. And assuming the average mythic is maybe four stacks, again, I think that's pretty generous. With the amount of runes and keys you'll need to buy off the trade market right now to pay for 51 runs, it literally costs roughly 3.5 stacks. All right. Let's play a little game. I'm gonna tell you how much money you can profit from alternative activities, and then I'll tell you how much you're profiting from forgery. In the exact same amount of time that it would take you to get a mythic from forgery, mining Dernick pays nearly 9 stacks without speed bombs on an alright day. And raiding in TNA with pro parties will get you 9 stacks raw, not including the materials, and casual Pfinder will probably net you half of that. Alright, cool. And guess how much you profit from forgery? 32 LE. What the fuck? It's not even that though. Like, there's still so many small gripes that eat me alive with this as well. Like, why does it look like every single dungeon was thrown in a tumble dryer? Why does it rain emeralds and items on me like a cheap hooker after each dungeon? 
Great, now I picked up so much random shit that I can't even pick up the tokens. Why do we need these tokens anyways? Can we just use the simple kill count doors instead? Why are there so many random ass invisible walls everywhere? Do they even serve a purpose? Why are there barrier blocks here? <laughs> what the fuck is this cutscene? Let's circle back to token rooms. I don't know about you, but the first time I had a collection room, it was so much fun. So much fun, in fact, that it's the signature puzzle room in every single dungeon. Whoever approved of this, I hate you. When I was first around three dungeons into the rotation, my initial reaction was, should have stuck the loot running. This dungeon immediately starts with a room where you have to kill 26 mobs that drop tokens that you have to put into this door. Then later, you have another door that has you kill 20 mobs that drop tokens that you need to put into it. This dungeon has a section where it randomly puts you in one of four rooms. I bet you'll never guess what they are. Yep, all four are token rooms. This dungeon has you get tokens from the mobs to put tokens into this tower. Two, guess what? You guessed it, get another token from the tower. And then you get four of those tokens from all four of those towers and use those tokens to open the door. Oh cool, this room just has a mini boss. Oh, nope, that fucker drops a token too. All right, I have a complicated relationship with the forgery. On one hand, this is what I used to call home. I used to spend every waking hour here trying to obtain my first mythic. At some point, sometimes there's a part of me that still wants to put on some DPS gear and run through it as fast as I can again. And I think most reasonable people can come to appreciate content like this. I've got friends who share that same sentiment too. But on the other hand, the reward for putting the time into this is simply not there. But fear not, our voices have been heard. With some surface level snooping in the Windcraft Discord server, you can clearly see that the content team is very well aware of this problem. So instead of dwelling on the present, let's talk about the future. So from this alone, obviously Fruma is taking priority over forgery and I think that's fine. And honestly, I think they make a great point when they say just mythics aren't a great end goal for forgery. I, for one, think this is a great opportunity to spread some love to shiny mythics. By all means, I think forgery could be a great means of obtaining rare shiny mythics. Look, imagine this. One day, the Windcraft team releases an update that pushes the ability to pull shiny mythics out of your forgery chest. Do you know exactly what this could mean? Instead of for waiting weeks on end for loot run pools to display the shiny mythic that you actually want, why not just gamble your odds at the forgery to get a completely random shiny? Maybe it doesn't need to be a guaranteed shiny, but I think having the chance of getting a super rare shiny that hasn't hit loot run rotations yet is a really cool addition to the forgery. And that would already set it apart from the other endgame activities and give people a reason to grind it. Yep, let's be reasonable. Is it game breaking? Certainly not. Now, are you more likely to turn a profit from this? Maybe potentially if you get a crazy rare shiny, but I don't think the profit margins will change all that much. Maybe add another drop for shiny mythics that is completely separate from your mythic drop chance with a pity chance that scales a bit lower. Or, you know, just make it so you're more likely to get mythics or more potential profit from the forgery in general. Because you're not pulling jack nor shit from these chests in the first place. Yet, yeah, I don't know, just moving some numbers around is probably enough. It can't be that hard. Overall, I see them making strides to improve the overall dungeon experience as well, albeit very slowly. In the past year or so, I've seen them replace many of the painful token doors in the game with simple mob kill doors. I love this addition because inventory management is absolutely painful when you're balancing dungeon drops from boss kills and the random shit from the dungeon completion piss rain that loves to hog all of your inventory space. I still don't really know why this exists. But like seriously though, you're putting thought into old and annoying rooms that ruin the pacing and fun, like Ice Sparrows for example. You used to have this room that would just drop a wall on you if you were too slow, and sometimes you'd have to do that like three times. Super annoying, and it felt really unnecessary. Since then, they removed that and now it's just a really long section where you just run to the other side. It still has annoying barrier blocks though. I kinda wish that was cleaned up as well. Also sometime last year, they added a new dungeon called Time Lost Sanctum. Whenever I introduce people to Windcraft, this is one of the first areas I take them to when they're first starting out. The rooms look so goddamn cool. The puzzles are simple and interesting instead of just copy paste token rooms everywhere. Mmm, you hear that? That is the sound of peak. If you don't think this is good content, then I guess you're just a racist pedophile. I am beyond excited to see this replace its lost sanctuary corrupted dungeon counterpart. And I hope this is the standard they're trying to reach moving forward. Um, please don't give this one the signature tumble dryer look, please. I'm gonna cry if it looks like a tissue in the aftermath of a bloody nose. Now, why do people still like the forgery right now? 
Well, you're probably fed. You're at least addicted to a few VTubers, let's be honest. I'm just kidding. The forgery is fun, but if you're wondering if you should try it from a monetary standpoint, absolutely not. Go research loot pool pricings for loot running and do that instead, or just prop in Dernic areas. If you're looking for experience and a challenge in the game akin to something like Legendary Island, then look no further. Especially with friends, I think the forgery can be a blast if you're looking for short digressions from your main progression. If you're bored, check it out. It has decently fun replayability and I feel like only so many things in Windcraft have that element. Forgery, you suck, but I like what's underneath. If anything, I'd recommend waiting. It's clear the content team still cares about this content and hey, maybe something will be adjusted before the Fruma expansion drops that makes the forgery worth touching again. Also, I took a lot of my points from this video straight from my boy Coot. He's already made a video on this topic and this dude's hilarious. Also, I'd like to note that 90% of the dungeons, when they turned quote unquote corrupted, they just slammed a bunch of red and black everywhere and it was like all right so we love my chemical romance now and we're going to uh make that the theme of every single corrupted dungeon so like there's this like show called black asphalt something asphalt and it just shows a bunch of like literally just gore related to car accidents and it scares the absolute piss out of 15 through 16 year olds that are trying to like survive their exams and it's like yeah so if you fuck up um your head could be split on the sidewalk and for the longest time during those classes i was like man I don't want to look like undergrowth ruins. <laughs> that would be terrible. There's a lot more, but his links are in the description below if you want to check him out. I don't think I would have even made this video if it weren't for him. Subscribe, comment, I read those. Sorry for the gap in uploads. I've been working on setting up some content projects coming up soon or in the far future that might surprise a lot of you. That'll probably be cool, I think. Thanks for watching. I've got to go take a shit. Be right back.